I'm gonna be straight up with you. I can't paint a mountain. I can't draw a tree. I certainly don't have the eye for abstract art. Despite that, I made all three of those images, but not in the traditional sense. All I had to do was write a text prompt, and an AI converted that prompt into the artwork. It seems like artificial intelligence is more creative than I am, or at the very least more proficient. It doesn't seem to care what the style is. It can make paintings, sketches, renders, and whatever nonsense this is. And it's clear to me that the AI is capable of bringing works of art to life. Dolly 2 is the big name in AI art right now, and it's popping off on YouTube. I have watched every minute of Dolly 2 content I can get my hands on. It's a marvel of technology that I believe will change the world. Sure, it can make silly pictures, but it can also spit out website designs and even invent art styles. The only limit is quite literally your imagination. If you can describe your idea, Dolly 2 can make it into an image. Here I am, drooling with anticipation over getting to try this out, but of course, access is restricted. Infinite potential, just out of reach. It reminds me of Zombocom. Let me know in the comments if you know what Zombocom is. Anyways, the point is, I want it, and I can't have it. Instead, I have to resort to Dolly 2's ugly younger brother, if you've been following the channel, you'll know I'm referring to Disco Diffusion, my favorite model in Voyage's AI art studio. On the surface, Disco Diffusion is exactly like Dolly 2. First, you come up with an idea, and you write out a prompt in plain language, then you wait for the AI to do its magic, and bam, you've got art. Only this AI, well, let's just say it isn't quite so magic. It doesn't seem to know what people look like, and there's no way it's ever seen a corgi before. Also, I don't know what that is, but it's definitely not a cat eating cereal. In fact, if you're new to Disco Diffusion, there is a great chance every time you hit that generate button, you get something that just sucks. And even worse, you'll have wasted the most valuable resource on Voyage, a visual credit. That's right. Generating images is computationally expensive, so we enthusiasts get to pay for it. Woo! If you generate an artwork, you have to say goodbye to one of these bad boys. And when you're out, you'll either have to wait for your subscription to refill them, or best case, shell out a nickel per credit just to restock. When I started out in AI art, these were the sort of images I got mangled messes with barely an ounce of creativity. It's not until you ask for a landscape image that you realize, huh, this model might have potential. It took ages and a heck of a lot of visual credits, but eventually I got a knack for writing prompts that generated something good. A magical cave, an alien planet made of pizza, a vase of flowers in the moonlight, an elvish city at night, a duel between samurai, and of course, my world-famous Kraken attacking a ship. I started getting beautiful images, and I got addicted. Write a prompt, wait for the result. I started to learn what the model was good at and bad at, and how to get it to generate some pretty cool stuff. Let me walk you through my process for writing prompts that'll make Disco Diffusion shine. Very first thing I need to do is come up with a reasonable idea. Generally speaking, I try to choose either a place, an event, or a concept. It's actually a little backwards from how I imagine artists work to come up with something to draw. Normally, I would think they'd come up with a subject, then later decide where it is and what it's doing, but disco tends to fall apart with that approach. It would much rather create a complicated cyberpunk armory full of weapons than something as simple as a pistol sitting on a table. Even the prompt cyberpunk gun in a neon weapons room is way, way worse than that first prompt. My understanding as to why is essentially this. Artists work on a painting one stroke at a time, one item at a time, and one subject at a time. They can draw a pistol, 
then draw a table, and then add detail, then draw the room around it. These AI models, they just don't have that luxury. It needs to work on the entire image at once. So it starts with like a distorted mess, and then over time, in an iterative process, it cleans it up. So when it reads a cluttered prompt like a cyberpunk armory full of weapons, it can make all sorts of decisions. It sees a clump of pixels and is like, ooh, that could be a rifle. And that there, that could be like a strap and that could be glowing energy and on and on making decisions until all the distorted pieces from the like original image turn into relevant parts of the final result. And for best results, you need to come up with a concept that the AI can improve on all at once. The whole image needs to improve in just a single iteration. Now, this armory is kind of interesting, but certainly needs some help. The AI read the prompt and made the image, but I wouldn't call it art. This is where I go to phase two of my prompt generation. I start writing visual tags, starting with cyberpunk armory full of weapons still, but I would add like large room, energy pulse rifles, neon light panels, and maybe a few more for style, uh, beautiful digital art, and cinematic quality render. I'd hit those and hit generate, and i get this. Oh my god, that is a huge improvement. But let's talk about some of those tags. How did I choose them, and why did they work so well? Well, let's start at the beginning. Large room. It speaks to scale. In just two words, that little tag gave the scene quite a bit of life, right? It tells the AI there should be depth, that the image needs to show the whole room, and it does a good job at defining what an armory really is. It's not just a wall, right? It's a room. It's a room full of weapons. The next tag, Energy Pulse Rifles, defines a clear object of the image and clarifies a lot of the detail we wouldn't have had otherwise. See how originally these guns were kind of bland? And now they have a specific style and theme and it looks cool. At the same time, it establishes the time period that these weapons should have come from. Again, with just a few words, I want to have as large a positive effect on the entire image as possible. So for the neon light panels tag, different lighting for a scene is going to make it entirely different. It's the same sort of thing, right? I've found that if you can define the lighting in your tags so that the AI doesn't have to just guess, it's going to have a much better time making something beautiful because lighting can have such a large impact on the scene. Lastly, and I talked about this briefly, but I try to establish both the style and the quality of the artwork. Beautiful digital art, cinematic quality render. Simple concepts that could change the image a lot. You could redesign these two tags to get an oil painting, a colored pencil sketch, or a vintage photograph. And finally, we made it to step three. We started with an idea, we added some tags, and now we're on to the magic sauce. I think that everyone who generates AI art has their own decision on what to do for this step, or if it's even necessary. But if you do this long enough, and I feel like I have, you come across a phrase that you start adding to every image you generate. A small, little tag that just seems to make everything better. For me, that tag is this. 4K HD wallpaper, premium prints available. Of course, I've also seen trending on ArtStation, vivid detail, or just 8K resolution. But hey, that's what I do. That's my process. I pick an idea the AI can handle, I add some tags that affect the whole artwork at once, then I tack on my lucky phrase. Ever since I started doing that, my artwork has stopped looking like this and started looking like this. This little token is way more useful if you know how to turn it into something good. If anything in this video ends up saving you a nickel and stops you from ending up with AI-generated junk, then maybe, just maybe, it's worth a subscribe. Alright, that's all I got. Thank you so much for watching.